Hey, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, then hi, my, hi, 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 name is Erica. And recently I released a compilation of clips from the Dad Challenge podcast that I found to be problematic. And I saw a, a, another creator commentary with how 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 he re he reacted to that video so i thought that i would break the video down and talk about each clip and why i included it because i was very intentional with it i am actually a a writer and we tend to be very detail oriented which may not always come through in my youtube videos because i'm not a great video editor but then again i never said i was but anyway so in this video that's what i'm going to be doing so if you'd like to see that then just keep watching and also also go watch commentary with kelly's video because it, it, it was a very good video. This isn't about you, but of course it is. Okay, so the first clip Josh says, this isn't about you, but of course you make it about you, which the reason why I opened the video with this is because as you will see throughout multiple of the clips, in this video, especially particularly the ones that are directly after this one is when he takes his own experiences and uses them to make a, a generalization or to make an assumption about the people he's talking about. And one thing I want to say, and I doubt Josh will watch this video, but I saw in his recent video, he said that people were dismissing him and telling him he couldn't speak on something because of his trauma. And while I cannot speak for uh, other commentators, I will say that I am not of that opinion. I don't think your trauma should discount your voice. But the thing with Josh is he... He makes a lot of assumptions and generalizations and he justifies it by being like, oh, well, I dealt with this as a kid. But just because that was your situation doesn't mean that every situation is similar to that. And that's something I just wanted to say so that people didn't get it twisted. This is why maybe, again, it's my trauma speaking. My mom refused to grow up and be a mother. She wanted to do what she wanted to do. And that meant abandoning me so many times. She came first over my entire life till I left when I was 16. My mom put herself first, always. Other people in my family, I don't want to mention names, put themselves first over their children. People that I know. When you put yourself over your children, like a lot of these single mom, young single moms do, you are no, you are just, you are not worthy of the title. You don't get it. You don't get my respect and you shouldn't get respect of anybody else. You. And in this clip, he talks about my night and being like, maybe this is my trauma speaking. And yes, it is because he's like, my mother did this to me. So of course, because Maya is drinking a, a white claw or, or because sometimes she likes to go out, then of course she's exactly like my mother, which no, she's not. The thing that obviously triggers me is because I remember those moments when I was a kid where there'd be ragers at my house and I yeah. was, it, was chaos, it was chaos for, a, ch for yeah. a child, especially if there's nobody who's sober, if there's yeah. an accident, if one of the kids gets hurt. So it's And in this, Next clip, he is interviewing one of Jess Ham's ex-friends, I believe. Her name is Janelle, and he's 
talking about Justin's parties and how it reminds him of when he was a kid and his mom would help parties. But it's like, not every situation is the same, Josh. And this price- That cup size might be a little bit like, uh, are you sure? Even, uh, Here, Josh is talking about Micah St ha Hoffer's body, particularly her chest size, and being like, oh, that cup size is too big for her. She can't wear that. How the hell would you know, Josh? Are you like a professional bra measure? Last time I checked, you aren't. And it's just gross that he, he really pays the attention to that, and then he acts like he knows, and then he points this out for all of his followers to like humiliate him in about their bodies, and that isn't okay. For dad. And it's unfortunate that your kids are not going to be raised with a dad, and he doesn't want to be a part of their life, but what a prick, because if maybe he could be the one that stops you from being a total douchebag, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Josh, I don't know who needs to tell you this, but men don't keep him in, in line. Men do not exist to, like, put him in, in their place. And I know people have made comments because I made a short about this clip, actually, so I will address some of those comments because one way of looking at it is, well, if you have two parents, then one may be able to balance things out. But but the way I look at it is this father left, so he is just as bad, if not worse than my ex. In, in my opinion, he's way worse than Maya. I don't think Maya is necessarily a bad parent, but this guy is because he just left and Josh doesn't really talk about that that much. Like once in a while, he'll put in a little comment about that. But like the real issue here is that this guy left and like you, you don't get to do that, buddy. We have little walkie talkies on our watches. Let's do that. Hey, you there? Hello? Hold on, I'm making supper for the kids. They can starve. I have a question. You can wait. Can you just answer it or like what you can't take? What are you doing? What are you making? Westy wants macaroni and cheese. Everly wants taco meat. And so you can't answer a question? You've already answered like two questions at this point. What is the question, Josh? What? I in included this clip because it illustrates, first of all, that Josh is just being disrespectful to his wife on camera. If my significant other acted like that toward me, we, we would not be together anymore, but I guess who each their own, but also, like, she's upstairs making, like, two different dinners for two different children, and he's just down in the basement mocking him in, which kind of shows that he might not be as good of a dad as he portrays himself to be, in my opinion. Like, I do think this reveals that he thinks a woman's role is to tend to the children and that the men, as long as they're not an absentee father, then they're doing their job, which I think is BS. Like, there shouldn't be a, a double st standard like that. And uh, uh, another thing this clip, in my opinion, illustrates is that Josh is not respecting his wife's boundaries because she said, like, I'm kind of busy right now. And he's like, well, you just answered two questions already. So can't you answer this? And while that, that it, it's a minor I infraction, but I mean, it still shows that Josh doesn't really respect boundaries, in my opinion, and I think boundaries are ex extremely important in everything in life.
yourself. I'm saying, I, I was arguing with uh, some girl on, in TikTok had a thing that says, if you work out to look better, that's fat phobia. And I was like, piss off into the wind, douche. Yes, if you work out to look a certain way, like that is, it may not be fat phobia, but it is at least disordered. It's not an ED because I hate how people just throw around the whole, and that's an ED because I think that trivializes e EDs. But like, buddy, this is probably a body positive TikToker and he has to say to her piss off into the wind douche just because she said that People, like it's kind of problematic to work out to look a certain way, which I think most registered dieticians and like ED professionals would agree with that statement. But of course, Josh doesn't care about that because why would he? She can't wear that. That, cut, that bra size is way too big for her. It's like it's Here he is again telling Micah Stoffer, that a cup size is way too big for her. Josh, do you even own a bra? I don't think you do. And even if you do, it's not up to you to say, well, I think that's too big of a bra size for her. Shut up. I'm sending a couple people there to find out actually who has selfish, who has special needs there. This shows Josh trying to go real life and bring people into fathering autism's business, which is inappropriate and is crossing a line and crossing boundaries. Like you shouldn't take this stuff offline and then try to like st stalk them in their real life. That, that's just not appropriate. And also Josh, and I know Josh said this later in the clip, but you can cannot tell if somebody is disabled just by looking at them, particularly when you're talking about disabilities like autism and intellectual disabilities. So I don't know what exactly you think you are accomplishing by sending people to these people's place of business and looking to see if they actually have disabled employees. Don't, don't do that, please. Please just don't do that. Oh, because of that. You didn't want to meet your daughter, but you slept with them the first night? I mean, right? Josh is kind of knocking Micah Stauffer's looks, which is like, there's nothing wrong with the way Micah Stauffer looks. Even if you don't find her attractive, just shut up. You. We don't have to say anything about her looks. And also, he's basically saying that James is just with her for the sex, which again, here Josh is again, caring so much about Micah Stauffer's sex life. It's kind of concerning. Not affect her future because she probably likely won't need to apply for jobs or be in the social scene dating and all that kind of stuff you know, right? She doesn't, the same ramifications aren't the same for Abigail as it would be for someone who doesn't, who is non-verbal, who is just, you know, who is not autistic. Christian Horizons is a, is a, like, they have all these houses all over Ontario for people like Abigail, okay? For people who have low functioning living skills, right? They can't dress themselves, they can't shower, they can't feed themselves, they don't, they can't take, to a degree, and it exists on a spectrum, but the people that I took care of for that year that I worked there were people just like Abigail. Um, I remember one specific guy. I'm Yay, the the infamous Christian Horizons clip where he talks about having worked in like a group home for disabled people. He uses stigmatizing terms such as low functioning and he uses this job experience to kind of act like he knows what he's talking about to speak over disabled people, to just speak over people that actually know what they're talking about, which is not okay, Josh. And you really need to stop using terms like low functioning and sp special needs. It's disabled, buddy. Just say the word disabled.
trust me, first of all, it's way easier to say disabled than special needs. And second of all, it's a lot less stigmatizing. So please, please stop. Also, can I just add that just because people are autistic and they do not speak does not mean they're a monolith. He says these people are just like A because they're autistic and they cannot speak and they cannot dress themselves and shower themselves. But no, that's like me saying Josh is exactly like every other able-bodied guy in the world. <laughs> I mean, that's ridiculous, buddy. Please educate yourself. And while you're at it, just stop talking. Looks like Kamala Harris's pajamas. I really don't understand the comment about a jacket looking like Kamala Harris's pajamas. Have you ever seen Kamala Harris's pajamas? If you have then you're weird about her past things that she has told people that i'm like oh, aghast right and they're like you know not su super surprising but like sexual things okay that like i shouldn't know that i know so first of all josh is once again shaming micah stoffer for her sex life and second of all he's saying he knows things about her that he shouldn't know, which is extremely creepy. And if I was her, I would be scared of him. And I get that Josh really doesn't like Micah Stoffer. I don't like her. But that doesn't excuse stalking her and being extremely creepy about things. It doesn't excuse it. But this is for anybody that wants 15 to pounds. She's 100 pounds. What are you going to do, Eugenia Cooney? You're not going to know. Does Josh really think making a joke about Eugenia Cooney and EDs is funny? Does he think that's all appropriate? Wait a minute. I, I thought that Josh, that Josh didn't like these unrealistic standards for women and wanted to to get rid of this toxic standard. Buddy, just so you know, making fun of EDs and women with EDs or anybody with EDs is creating that toxic standard. It's upholding it. It's just disgusting. Fuck off, Josh. Smelled like coffee, that's pretty. Bird! Because it's. Josh is saying that um, Micah Stoffer's vagina smelled like coffee. Why? Why are you talking about anybody's vagina, Josh? How? How about you erase the word vagina from your vocabulary? Because whenever you say that word, nothing good comes, comes out a after that. You're making fun of the way they smell or look. Like, please, please stop. We, him and do not, nobody with a vagina needs you making these comments. No, but I, I can promise you as somebody who owns a, a, a vagina that I do not need you making these comments, Josh. Like, can you stop? I swear, if my f f ha ha father was on the internet saying these things, I would flip a shit. And also, he wants to say that children of mommy vloggers and children of sex workers are going to get bullied because their classmates can see what their parents are posting and they're going to make fun of them for it. Is Josh not worried his kids are going to get bullied for how he's acting on the internet? Because I can tell you this, if I went to school with someone whose father did that, I think I would 
probably judge them a lot more than somebody whose parent is a sex worker. And please don't get me wrong. Like, it's not okay to judge kids based on what their parent does. But I'm saying if I was back in like middle school or high school and I was a, a shitty person who was extremely judgmental, I think I would judge that before I would judge somebody whose parent was a sex worker. But then again, that's just me. It was dumb because we got lost in downtown Detroit. Don't ever get lost as white people downtown Detroit, okay? White I mean, boys. as as anyone, really. As anyone, don't. And these guys pull up in this giant Tahoe or this big giant black, I don't know what it was, Escalade or something, roll down their window and look at us and they say, what are you listening to? We roll up our window and <laughs> the highway was right at the next exit. So we got, we hopped on the highway and took off. We we're like, we, I don't even know. And I don't even know. That was scary because they, we don't know anything because we're from Canada, man. We don't have that kind of Here, Josh is saying that as a white person, he felt, he felt threatened in an, in an area highly populated by black people. That's racist, Josh. You should go and unpack that. That maybe not publicly on your platform, but you should take some racial justice classes because you, you seem to really need them. Ugh. Oh my God. Just be real. Okay? She does things most girls don't. Why is Josh obsessed with Micah Stoffer's sex life? He loves to make comments like she does things most girls won't. Can you can you not? Like that that has nothing to do with what Micah did to H. And trust me, I'm not white knighting for Micah. I think she's a shit person. I think she's ableist. I think she's one of the worst types of people out there. But this has nothing to do with her sex life. So stop. Hi. Hi. How are you? Hi. Hi. Really? Chill. Share some special news. A lot of you guys can special news. Thank you. Right here. <laughs> Hi, uh, special news. In addition to our family. Here is yet another example of Josh's racism. He is making fun of the way I think his name is Hollow Nig Guzman. He's making fun of the way he talks, and that's racist. I know I'm not supposed to say that word on, on YouTube, but this pisses me off that Josh acts like this. Please stop. Cause she let you in Pandora's box the first night, bruh. Josh is yet again saying something about Micah Stoffer's sex life. Also, can we stop referring to vaginas as Pandora's box? Because if you know anything about mythology, you know the implications of that and why that's a misogynistic analogy to make from someone who's studied classical civilizations, by the way. The vaginas are not Pandora's box, Josh, please. Please stop calling them that. We're not letting out evil into the world and we have sex. <sighs> this dude is seriously, he has lots of issues with him and in case you haven't been able to tell already, he seems to really hate women. So yeah. Okay, so Tommy came they're actually leaving today. They're going back. They spend the second half of their winter break at their mom's house. They're leaving. So like totally going skating like. <laughs> And we haven't been skating for like two years and th three years and stuff. Last time someone else died, but you know, we're gonna get the van, I'm gonna go there, we're gonna but God's gonna eat so much sugar and I took my Adderall and stuff like that, but I still can't, you know, I'm just, I feel like I'm just like a little bit, you know, I feel like I'm just moving a little bit too slow. Jeez, Jess fam. Do you know this whole thing with Jess fam? First of all, he's mocking her by putting on this hideous red wig. 
I don't know where he found that, but <laughs> he found it somewhere and it's hideous and it's not brushed or anything. But then the thing that really got me about this clip in particular was when he made the statement about Adderall kind of mocking people with ADHD, which is not okay. And I think I might have heard Josh say once before he has ADHD, but that still doesn't make it okay to like make jokes like that and make fun of if I don't know if Jess Fam has ADHD, it doesn't matter because either way, he's mocking people with ADHD and it's not a funny joke, Josh. Like, don't don't quit your day job because you can't be a comedian, buddy. Again, not going to say the thing I was thinking, but you know what I'm thinking. Josh says he's not going to say what he's thinking, and yet in the same video, he makes reference to Pandora's box and Micah having sex before introducing her daughter to this guy she just went and on one date with. So, buddy, you've already told us what you're thinking, so don't act like, oh, I'm not gonna be rude about that on my channel. You just were. You just were. Wrong with this whole world of trauma influencing. It should have been you. I couldn't film anymore in the ER, but they confirmed I had a miscarriage. This. Now, people don't actually realize any of this because they don't really want to. Probably they don't understand how the sausage is made. But this is supposedly after the moment she comes back and this is heartbreaking things that do happen to people. Why would you set up a camera? Why is there a camera set up before you do anything else? And how awkward was it to set up a camera then hug? I need to point this out because on, although I do believe her, I do believe that they also, and I hesitate to say this because with this, this type of stuff and miscarriages, this is really, really hard stuff, is that even this is content. And even this gets them paid. And here Josh is mock mocking Rihanna K and knocking her for sharing her miscarriage. Josh, if somebody has a miscarriage and wants to be open about it online, shut up. Don't, if that bothers you, don't pay attention because that's not harming people. They're sharing their st story. And if that's what they feel like they need to do, le let them do it and just shut up already. And of course he uses that to be like, most people don't like to think about it because they don't want to see how the sausage is made. But by, by the way, can somebody please comment down below if they know of how the sausage is made. Is that an actual saying or is that just a Josh-ism? Because I'm not, I've never heard that before, but he seems to say it a lot. But anyway, Josh is using this to be like, see, this is how family vloggers are fake. But her sharing her miscarriage isn't exploiting anybody. It's not hurting anybody. It's sharing her story on her terms. And I don't see why Josh has such an issue with this. I understand they had to set up the camera and everything, but it's like, yeah, because it's not like we're watching this from her window standing outside her house. Of course, they have to set up a camera. I, I had to set up a, a camera b before f filming this. Like, yeah, this is kind of contrived, but I'm still saying what I'm saying and I'm still saying how I feel. It's just, I happen to be talking to a, 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 a camera right now. I think the biggest thing about Mark He's not going to say what he loves about it. No. I mean, there's only one reason to stay with someone this dumb for that long. I'm not going to say it to you. You know what I'm saying. Okay. He's just staring at her boobs. Uh, again, Josh is making comments about Micah's sex life. He seems 
for a hey woman, he seems to hate so much. He seems to have a lot invested in her sex life. Like, you, you don't see me coming on here talking about Josh's sex life. Ew. I, I don't even want to picture that. <laughs> because he is... A, a vile person. He's a nasty, mean person. I, I don't want to picture that. So, and I'm sorry if I made you picture that now. Wow, I'm really, I'm really sorry about that. It sucks, doesn't it? Probably smells like your vagina. Like I said, this. I'm talking about what he thinks Love Meg's vagina smells like. Wow, he really loves to talk about how vaginas smell. And and I understand he's making reference to Gwyneth Paltrow's goop handle, like, I think it's called, smells like my vagina. It's, it's really bizarre. Gwyneth Paltrow's a very bizarre person. <laughs> but, but that has nothing to do with Love Meg, so he's, He's like making a joke about this when well, it has nothing to do with her and it's just s sexualizing her and it's sexual harassment in my opinion. And I know people are going to be like, you throw that word around, Erica. No, I don't. I've been sexually ha harassed before I know what it's like. So I'm going to call Haul it out when I see it, and I don't care if that bothers people. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I can't wait to hear the heat from the women. Young pointed out their boobs. You're a misogynist. Can't wait. I'm very excited. Josh, first of all, I don't know why you're making a mockery out of people who call you out on your misogynistic bullshit, because that's what it is. But second of all, I would like to offer a correction here that you circling these women's boobs is more so than misogyny. You are objectifying women. So at least use the correct terminology, please, buddy, if you're gonna make fun of the people who call you out on your own bullshit. And if you don't want to get called out on misogyny and object then stop doing it. Stop being a misogynist. Stop objectifying women. It's really, really, really not that hard, but uh, apparently it is for her Josh. She's wearing lingerie. She's 13. She's wearing lingerie. Okay, so from a, from a teenage boy who, who's grown up in the world of social media, and you know, like let's say, okay, so Tristan turns 14. He goes into grade 9. Mm -hmm. You're in high school. And there's a grade nine girl that has an Instagram like this. What, what's the word? What reputation does she gain at school because of that? Does, and do you know a girl that has an Instagram like this? Okay, so here Josh is showing his teenage son, Daniel Cohn's Instagram. If you don't know, Daniel Cohn is a young teenager and she posts a lot of like pictures in bikinis and lingerie and she's like 14. I don't know how old she is, but it's not really appropriate. And many people think she's being forced to post this kind of content by her, her parents, which is obviously exploitation and it's not okay. But Josh, why are you showing this to your teenage son? I hate to break it to you. You who think you're like getting a younger person's perspective, but you're just further exploiting this girl and it's not okay. Why does it matter what type of what type of reputation a um, high schooler would have if they posted the type of shit that Daniel Cohn posts because it's not about her reputation. If she's being exploited, at the end of the day, that's all that matters. 
you shouldn't be like, oh, well, what would the kids in your school say about this? It's not about that, Josh. You, you're just bringing your son on here and you are further exploiting Daniel Cohn, which shame on you. He doesn't resolve anything. James is the beta. For someone who likes to throw around the word incels, J Josh sure does know a lot of their terminology and he feels very comfortable just using the term beta male, which if you don't know, that's a big thing in the insult community. They have alpha males, beta males, they have all types. Now there's some type of sigma male. They love to use Greek letters to put in front of male to say that there's a hierarchy of men. It's stupid, it's ridiculous, it's not real. But Josh seems to think it is. So for someone who likes to call other men incels, Josh sure seems like he might, he might kind of float around in those communities. I'm not saying he does. I'm saying he might because he's very comfortable using their terminology. My opinion is really dangerous to body positivity, to moms who have struggled with this, who've gone through this already, and is exploiting it. Okay? What she says here, and I know it's probably said in grief, but she should probably take it down, is what I'm saying. I just can't help it at this point. Like, I'm really mad at myself. Here's why. Because I think, like, when the baby was in my tummy, I was just in a place where I was, like, talking really negatively about my body. And I'm so mad because I got to a point where I... Never mind the fact that Bits of Brie, okay, is a beautiful mom who has had three babies and is gorgeous, okay? Let's be real. I, get, I can't tell someone how to feel about their body. I get that. I understand how body looks, you know, how people see their bodies and everything else. Um, and maybe she's been receiving comments about it, but she's absolutely fine. But the danger of that is, is that she knows she's fine, okay? And that everybody watching this who doesn't look like her after having three babies inadvertently feels so crappy about themselves because they never got to they are not like this at all for somebody who is a raging fat phobe and loves to knock people for their weight josh sure loves to tell women that them saying that they're insecure about their body they're harming body positivity no josh Josh, this has nothing to do with body positive. Josh wouldn't know body positivity if it smacked him in the face. But anyway, beyond that, Josh here is talking about Brianna K. is saying she had a negative body image before her miscarriage and saying that now she feels guilty for that. And he's telling her, that she's harming uh, other people. And it's like her sharing what she feels about her body and her miscarriage is not harming other people. She's not telling people they caused their miscarriage by feeling bad about their bodies. She's saying this is how she felt. And now she feels bad about this. She's letting her feelings out. She's because if not, this stuff just rolls around in your brain and just becomes a toxic mess. And that is why people share their feelings, Josh, so that other people can feel validated and be like, I thought it was just me, but now I know I'm not alone. And anyway, Josh, you cannot tell a woman, well, you don't have body image issues. Clearly, you know you're perfect. What? First of all, Josh is the first to knock women's bodies, tear them apart. And secondly, body image is complicated. Where? And I was very sick with my ED. I didn't think my body was perfect. Like, 
Just stop talking. Stop talking about body image. Stop talking about body positivity. Stop talking about EDs. Just don't touch that with a, a 10 foot pole because he he's spreading this conceptions and he's just causing more harm and telling people they're causing harm for just expressing themselves which stop also someone else feeling bad about their body doesn't make you feel like you should feel bad about you but body image doesn't work that way and yes when people spread negative talk it can promote like a toxic environment where everybody's just being very negative ab about the way they look but don't say that because you have b body image issues and you look like this that women who don't look like you are then going to feel even worse about themselves like stop stop policing the way people talk about how they feel when it doesn't impact you josh guess what it doesn't impact you so you can stop white knighting for him in because we don't need a white knight trust me f f f feminism has gone far enough that josh we don't need you white knighting for us you're not doing a very good job so please just Please, please, put away your sword, put away your armor, and just stop. Stop it already. I mean, I can't talk. <laughs> like, okay, like, 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 if you don't listen to, and like, there's quarantine for elving, and, um, like, there's, there's, ugh. there. And there's like snow in a pool that's fake. It's 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 soap like 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 totes. <laughs> My Adderall is just it's there. It's 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 it's. I just took it. Like more jokes about Adderall. Yay! Josh, can you can you stop? Dry out. <laughs> Well, the, uh... Maybe you should conduct yourself to a gym. Start running. Like Here, he's making fun of somebody's weight. That the guy from fathering autism, whether I agree with fathering autism or not, to fat shame him and to be like, you should conduct yourself to a gym. Josh, can you not? How about you don't talk about other people's bodies? Can that be a, a rule that we can uh, agree upon here that talking about people's bodies is off limits? Josh, if you would like to talk about your body and how you feel about that, that's fine. But let's leave other people's bodies alone, okay? I'm not sure that's, is that, is that regulation? This one is not bent over properly. Aaron's got the right, see that? This one too, they even got that little curve. This one's like, eh, eh. she can't. Him drawing that curve on Aaron Williams' butt and being like, see, she has that little curve there. Can you not stare at random women's asses on the internet? Can you not like draw on them? It's just, no. Sex work could be, and it has been an acceptable form of making money lately, specifically here in Canada. It's been regulated, it's been de decriminalized, and you can do it. And it's if you want to do it and you're young, and go for it. This is where I'll start getting a little bit upset. If you do that line of work, and I've said this about Shannon Rose, and we're going to talk about it in a minute, then okay. But I think it's selfish for you to then bring in children into that. Parents are not selfish if they're in sex work and have children. If they're trying to do whatever they can to provide, hide for their children, who are you to call them selfish? Because at the same time, he would be mad at them if they weren't working and he would call them lazy, but, or if they were had a family vlog, he would call them exploiters. But it's like sex work, 
has nothing to do with that. So, like, I feel like with Josh, if you're a woman, you just can't do anything right. Just, like, you have to follow his rules. And if you dare stray away from those, then you're just a trash person, which, Josh, last time I checked, you're not this beacon of, like, the greatest parent in the world. So how about you focus on being a better dad yourself and not sitting in your basement and knocking him in for every little thing they do on the internet. Just a suggestion. Facts. Foster children with disabilities. Roughly one third of children in foster care have disabilities. Once, okay, I'm not even gonna read this because it's not gonna go to foster care, it's stupid. Okay, and also if you think about this for a second, Abigail is a famous child with autism. If she ever got removed from that house, you know that because of her status, is the only probably good thing that would ever come from this, because of her status of who she is, she'd be very well taken care of in the public sphere. I promise you that. So, your actions could lead to Abby being physically harmed. So she's telling me that what I'm doing here is going to lead to Abby's physical harm. Mentally abused and molested. Oh my god. That's where you landed here. You are sick, Tara Funson. And you're disgusting. Never comment on my vlog ever again. You're gross for saying something like that. Here Josh is yelling at somebody for commenting that him saying to call CPS on fathering autism can actually harm a more because disabled children in the foster care system can face abuse but he gets mad at this person and tells them they're disgusting by just pointing out an actual fact. Like, Josh, if you actually care about the exploitation of children, then why don't you shed a light on this issue instead of silencing people who try to talk about it on your channel? It's a big issue. F f disabled foster children are more likely to face abuse and that's a real issue so josh why don't you care about that or is it everything is just on your terms is it not josh if you're not the one who brings light to it you're gonna silence people and then later on you're gonna bring it up yourself as if you're the one who like came up with this wild idea please please just just shut up Another thing here is that just because she's on YouTube and people know who she is doesn't mean she's not that she can end up in the foster care system and that she isn't prone to being a B U S E D because obviously fame does not it doesn't stop that from happening so I, I don't know what Josh thinks he's saying here because he's really just showing how I ignorant he really is. In the place like where I worked, at Christian Horizons, where the adult, where they go as adults and they have professionals take care of them, which I don't think there's anything wrong with that because those people had amazing lives. Like, I can't imagine the amount of activities those guys that I was jealous. I got to take them sometimes. And they had, great they had great lives. Parents came maybe once or twice a week, enjoyed dinner with them and had a great life. Here Josh is romanticizing group homes and institutionalization of disabled people saying he's jealous of them because they get to see their parents once a week for dinner. Wow, what a great life. They get to be with their family once a week. And I know somebody commented on one of my other videos that Josh is saying this because he had a traumatic childhood and he didn't have a great relationship with his mother, but like, that doesn't excuse romanticizing institutions and glossing over some of the real issues with them here. And Josh just comes across as very patronizing towards the disabled people that he worked with in this instance. So yeah, we did this lady. I don't know who her name is. She's, she's flexed nicely, very tall, very thick. Very good. I'm now he's rating these with him in and being like very tall, very thick, very. Good. Can you not? How how about you? Don't say anything about 
uh, other people's bodies. I know I said that earlier in this video, but I'm gonna say it again because this is a pattern Josh has and it needs, it needs to stop. About makeup and everything, and I'm kind of glad that you don't do it every day, but maybe just put some clothes on too. Like meet halfway with me. <laughs> And people are like, Josh, you never, you're never happy. Either they wear too much makeup and they have too much filler or they don't wear enough and you hate them. Yeah. F first of all, she is clearly wearing clothes. Second of all, like, no matter what women do, Josh isn't okay with it. And I know he says that's just because they exploit their children, but this is some a totally separate thing from exploiting their children. Like, if you want to call them out for that, do that. But then don't knock them for everything else. Please, just Josh, stop. I know this sounds bad because I was a large dude at one point. But all I don't know why I need to take pictures to see if you have food. <laughs> I'm sure they have food. Just because somebody's bigger doesn't necessarily mean they have food. Like, there's, like, that, Josh, you, you don't know any, you seem to know nothing about weight and food because your body actually holds on to weight when you're in starvation har har mode and you can look that up. I'm not a scientist, I'm not a doctor, but I, I do know that much, but apparently Josh does not. But here, again, he is shaming fathering autism for their weight, which it's, it's not helping anybody in this situation. I would love to know that. If any of you know of like a very prominent aut autism therapy person or whatever, or some per professional in that field and you know that studies it for a living please let me know i would love to interview them about this case this is a crazy crazy thing you did this josh do you mean an aba therapist because if you do you should really look into that because they're not these great experts that you should be listening to when it comes to uh, 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 autism how about you listen to actual autistic people. With her fake eyelashes, her fake boobs, her fake face, her fake tan and everything. Why, why, why do you have to, have to knock women for wearing makeup or getting cosmetic surgery or anything like, why is that your business? And why is that something you knock because you value natural beauty? like? Josh, just because you, you prefer something doesn't mean that you can knock everybody who doesn't adhere to your beauty standards. You know what that's called? That's called me. It's Arjuni, Josh. You know, consent. Abby is nonverbal. She cannot consent. Um, IDD and autism, she has uh, the capacity of, I think some people argue, between 18 month old and a two year old. Just because someone cannot speak does not mean they cannot consent. Let's stop spreading this m m misinformation because it's extremely paternalistic and in infantilizing. It takes agency away from disabled people. Just because someone cannot speak does not mean they cannot consent. And friendly reminder that when Josh goes to say someone has the mental age of blah, 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 there's no actual such thing as a mental age. It's something that ableist professionals made up to silence disabled people. So there. It's weird to me. Hannah looks in some ways she could be 20. And then if you look at her in a different angle, she's 78. That is, it's an enigma. It's really, really weird. Can we not shame women for how they look? Be like from one angle, she looks like she's 20. From another, she looks like she's 75. First of all, there's a large double standard for women and aging. Like men are are allowed to 
age and women really aren't. And Josh is contributing to this toxic double standard. What a shock. Lazy. I don't think anybody who lives their life active as they say that they are, and you cannot be severely obese if you live a super active life. Josh, you cannot tell by looking at someone whether they are active or not. Again, this goes back to the whole weight thing. Like, the science he's spouting has been disproven. And don't just listen to me like there's act actual scientists and doctors and and dietitians know a lot more about this than I do, but I know that Josh is just creating more stigma and being fat phobic by perpetuating this myth that you can tell how active somebody is just by looking at them. And just so you know, being an inactive person does it make you have moral superiority over somebody who's not active? So can we not? Exceeding life to you is, can I share your moment yesterday when you had yes. the pump on one side and a can of white claw meat? <laughs> so classy. You're drinking while pumping your breast milk. is so awesome. Why don't you just, I don't know. I just, you the classic mama. These people are so classic. I hope all moms act like this. I guess it takes a different type of person. If women who are breastfeeding want to drink and they pump out that milk and don't give it to their babies, I don't see how that's your business. It's not like they're drinking and giving their baby that milk. So can... It's not trashy to drink as a, as a new mother, as long as you know to do the right thing. Like, Josh really has these rules for women that you have to follow. Don't follow his rules. He, he doesn't know anything clearly. So just don't listen to this man. Oh, great. Sunkissed used gum on the sidewalk is here. And Brittany Mora, mm hmm, bunch of great ones. I really hate when men refer to women as used gum. This goes back to purity culture and the myth of a woman's virginity. And if you have sex, then suddenly you are like used gum. And I don't know if that's what Josh is meaning here, but he's someone who comes from a religious background and he's calling a woman who has children. I don't know if she's married. It doesn't really matter, but he's referring to her as used gum, which I don't like. I, I, I don't like where this, I don't like how this feels, Josh. It, it really feels gross. It feels misogynistic. Feels like you're perpetuating impurity culture, which you claim to be against. Who is this? <laughs> I love this drug circle thing. Now, I have asked Aaron who this person is because I was like, are those real? And Aaron said, they are real. They've been reduced. And I was like, okay, next. Why the hell would you ask somebody if somebody's boobs were real. Why is that your business? Josh, you're weird. Like, I, I would never slide into one of my, someone I know's DMs and be like, oh, do you know if so-and-so's boobs are real? Are those their real boobs? No, I don't do that. You know why? Because I'm not a weirdo. And not, not, not for nothing, but why are you telling the internet that they've actually been reduced? Like, this isn't your business. It's not your story to tell. If this person wants to share, yeah, I've had a, a restroom reduction, that's her story to tell. It isn't yours, Josh. I'm not pausing. <laughs> so... 
Okay, let's let's take a look quick here. We know that these are real. That's great. And now c circling her boobs, being like, we know these are real. That's good. You're literally objectifying this person and you're like, you're breaking up their body into parts and kind of talking, well, we know this is real, but what about this? That's objectification. We, women do not exist to be your eye candy, Josh. I, 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 I seriously, I'm pretty sure Josh is in his 40s and yet he still acts like he's like 15. But she's got those, not gonna say it, this lady. But, but she's got those, not gonna say it. Well, Josh, you say boobs a bunch of other times in this video. Just say boobs. Or better yet, don't comment on women's bodies. Keep women's body hearts. That should not be in your vocabulary because you do not know how to be mature. You do not know how to not objectify people. So can you just, just don't talk about people's bodies once again. Boobs everywhere, there's boobs everywhere. Okay. All right. Oh, there's boobs everywhere, boobs everywhere. What? That, 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 that's just stupid. Typically, if you have a bunch of people with boobs, yeah, there's gonna be lots of boobs. Cause we have two each, <laughs> typically. So yes, boobs, boobs everywhere. I, 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 I don't get the point of that comment who cannot consent nor will ever be able to consent. She cannot talk. She has a cognitive ability of some people place her between the age of 18 months and six years old. Just because somebody cannot speak does not mean they cannot consent. Josh, Josh, you don't know this person personally. You don't know their capabilities even most professionals don't know people's capabilities so please stop and once again the whole she has the cognitive ability of is bs you know what i wasn't able to speak until i was like two i think but that didn't mean i was I had less of a cognitive ability than other two-year-olds that could talk. It just so happened that I could not speak. Like, that has nothing to do with your cognitive ability. And it's really not for Josh to say what this person's cognitive ability is. Oh, thank God it's over. The forehead ratio in this picture. <laughs> he really loves to make fun of women's looks. So on any social media platform, people like me, people like Maya, people like everybody, will draw the attention of the people that are kind of like-minded, right? I oh, finally, I'm done. I, I get to rest my voice. My voice is very tired. But this last clip I, I put in because here Josh is saying that typically as a creator, you attract like-minded individuals, which yes, Josh, you attract judgmental, misogynistic, ableist, fatphobic pieces of trash. That, that, that is what you uh, attract. So yeah, you're right, Josh. You attract types of audiences that are like you, but that's not always a good thing if you're not a good person and if you don't act right on the internet so yeah that is why i made that the last clip because i think that sums up this whole video and if you if you enjoyed this i guess can please give it a big thumbs up i mean i, I feel like enjoy is a weird word because it's it's some very 
some frustrating shit. But if you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up. If you have not already and you would like to see more of my content, please consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm getting closer to 3,000, which I'm really excited for and hope I can get there before my birthday, which is May 22nd. So if you hit that sub subscribe button, that, then you are helping make that happen. So, and I hope to see you again next time. Bye.